So your Copic marker is running low on ink and it's time to refill? My name is Amy and I'm a professional illustrator. Most of my Copic markers here are at least 14 years old. Actually, the oldest Copics are 20 years old. With care and regular maintenance, your markers can last as long or longer than mine. So let me show you the only reliable way to refill a Copic marker. Because proper refilling is the reason Copics can last for a lifetime. Okay, so I know this is probably the 14th refill video that you've watched today. And I know a lot of people refill their markers with the drip method or by watching the hash marks on the side of the refill bottle, or by dumping ink in one end until it flows right out the other. The problem with these methods is the imprecision of it all. Basically, you don't know when to add ink, and then you can't tell if you've added enough ink or if you've added way too much. It's a guessing game. I'll talk more about this in a follow-up video, but here in this episode, we're just focusing on the refill process. So here's what I'll be using. First up, I've got a Copic sketch marker, B14, which is running low on ink, and I have the corresponding B14 refill. And that's important. The refill must match the marker. Any other refill, even if the number's kind of close, it's a different color and it's going to change the color of your marker. If you throw off the color, then the numbering system is useless. So double check and match those codes. And by the way, I'm refilling a sketch style Copic today, but we would use the same exact process to refill a square barrel classic or a slim barrel chow. Next, you'll need a jeweler's scale, which measures at least one digit below the decimal point. You need to measure at least to the tenths of a gram. This one is under $10 on Amazon. I bought mine back in 2014, and I've never even had to change the batteries. There's a link to my resource page in the description. I'm using a pair of Copic tweezers today, but honestly, most of the time, if the color is light enough, I just use my fingers. But B14 is dark enough that I don't feel like staining my fingers right now. I've also got a few cotton swabs and some paper towel, which I have cut into small squares. I keep these squares soaking in rubbing alcohol. They're for cleaning only. It's important to purchase the highest percentage of isopropyl alcohol that you can. This is 91% alcohol, which means this bottle also contains 9% water. Water is very bad for your Copic marker nibs, and isopropyl isn't the same kind of alcohol that goes into Copic ink. So we only use this to clean the caps and the body of the marker, never the nibs. Never, ever the nibs. So we start by weighing the marker with the caps on. Because here's the thing, there's no ink gauge on a marker. If you don't know how much ink is in the marker, then you don't know how empty it is. If you don't know how empty it is, you have no idea how much ink to add. Without a scale, some of you are adding way too much ink causing ink explosions and wasting money. But the vast majority of people are never adding enough ink, which is kind of like starving your marker to death. So this sketch right now is only 12.6 grams. That's low enough to make blending difficult and we need to refill it. The factory weight of a sketch marker is 14.6 grams, but they can come as low as 14.2 grams. I deliberately underfill my markers to only between 14 to 14.2 grams. This reduces the frequency of those random ink explosions. Now let's be clear what we're refilling here, because many people think we're just filling up the empty space between the nibs inside the marker. 
Nope. Inside every Copic marker is a soft, fibrous core. It's a cotton sponge wrapped in a thin sheet of plastic, just like a sushi roll. The ink goes into the core only. If you crack open a used marker, you won't see any ink residue on the inside sides of the barrel because the ink stays only in the core. Unless you're one of those wild refillers who dumps a ton of ink into your marker. If you overflow the core, then the ink just sits in this empty space waiting to ooze out when you least expect it. And here's the other thing you need to know. When I say the factory weight of a sketch marker is 14.6 grams, that doesn't mean that you purchased 14.6 grams of ink. The marker itself, all the plastic plus the caps and the nibs and the empty core, that all weighs 11.5 grams. So there's only about three grams of ink in a marker. And this is why I tell people that if you weigh your dry marker and it only weighs around 11 grams, don't even bother trying to refill it. The marker is damaged beyond repair because the core inside is hard, crusty, and dried out. You don't need a refill. You need a whole new marker. Okay, so to refill, I'm going to remove the chisel nib. The chisel nib, the broad nib, that end that you hardly use. This nib is a solid piece of felt. It's hard and durable. It could survive a nuclear war. Your brush nib, on the other hand, don't even think about it. Here's what happens if you grab the brush nib wrong. This is called degloving. You'll accidentally remove the little felt hat. And once you mess with the hat, you'll never get it back on properly. So remove the chisel nib. I pop the chisel nib into the cap and then I set that on the scale while I squeeze a little bit of ink into the open end of the marker. Over the years, you'll get really good at knowing how much to squeeze based on the starting weight of the marker. Like at this point, I barely need the scale once I know that starting weight. But for the first year or so, squeeze a little and then stop and reweigh the marker. Keep doing that little by little until you get to 14 grams for a sketch. Replace the nib, and now you're ready to color. At this point though, I take a few seconds to clean the collet and the cap. See here inside the cap? Every time we recap the marker, we don't always take the time to precisely line up the nib so that it never touches the inside of the cap. Nope. I do it quick, which means I paint the inside of the cap by rubbing the nib up against the inside until it clicks. It just happens. Over time, with many recappings, the ink starts to build up along that click seal. I call this stuff Copic Jelly, and it's really just Copic ink minus the alcohol. That alcohol is evaporated, so the stuff inside the cap is sticky and dark. Copic Jelly on the click seal keeps your caps from sealing airtight. The other problem with jelly is that you're re-smearing the jelly onto the side of your brush nib, which can then get transferred onto your project. These dark streaks, that's old jelly. So I use a couple of cotton swabs dipped in the alcohol, plus a couple of those squares of paper towel. And I use this to clean the inside of the cap, plus the contact points on the collet. Remember, don't touch rubbing alcohol to the nib. That'll introduce water into your nib, and good marker paper really does not like water. Clean caps, clean collets, full core. That means a happy marker and happy coloring. Now let's cover a couple of common questions. Someone always wonders if you have to refill each end separately or they wonder if refilling from the chisel end really gets ink down to the brush nib. But I showed you, it's just one core feeding both ends. It doesn't matter which end you fill, both nibs will get the new juice. Okay, so what if you accidentally overfill your marker? You can milk the excess ink from the marker by squeezing the brush nib gently inside a bit of paper towel. But this is all wasted ink, and ink is expensive. 
This is why I want you to refill slowly to reduce the chance of adding too much ink. Now, whenever I teach this refill process in a class, someone always asks me for the recommended weights without caps. And I've even seen people doing videos using like similar to my weights, but they've been adjusted for no caps or even no cap, no nib refilling. I don't recommend doing this. I really don't recommend doing this. First of all, you don't need to uncap both ends of the marker to refill it. All of that airflow pressurization talk about Copics, it's total garbage. There's no need to take off the second cap. It makes no scientific sense. And I do understand, weighing the marker with that loose cap and the nib also sitting on the scale, well, it's a bit clumsy. It would be much easier just to check the weight of the marker without that other cap hanging around. But here's the thing. What is my recommended weight for a sketch marker? Do you remember the number I said? You probably do. 14 grams. 14 grams is easy to remember. So as you're getting ready to begin a coloring project before you start, you can quickly check all of your markers to make sure that they're 14 grams full and ready to blend. And as you color, if you start to notice that you're having a bad blending day, like some of your blends really don't wanna smooth out, you can quickly chuck that marker onto the scale and realize, ooh, I'm low on ink and that's why the blend isn't working. It's harder to measure your markers if you only know the proper weight with the caps off. You have to remove both caps and then one or both of the nibs just to check the naked weight. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather use my precious time to color, not strip search my markers. So that's it, clean and full markers. And if you want to know why it's important to keep your markers totally full and juicy, Watch my super easy tip for smooth Copic blends here.